Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, Visibility Catalyst and best-selling publisher at InspiredLivingPublishing.com, as well as the beloved Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational magazine for women since 2006. Do you know, everything and everyone in the world has this unique vibration, also called frequency. And when you learn to recognize, embrace, and utilize the power of your personal frequency, you can make tremendous positive changes in your life. Understanding your frequency can bring you more happiness and joy as you walk your divine path so that you can create the life that you truly desire. And I'm really excited to be talking about this today. And joining me is Melissa Alvarez, best-selling, award-winning author who has written 10 books and nearly 500 articles on self-help, spirituality, and wellness. As a professional intuitive coach, energy worker, spiritual advisor, medium, and animal communicator, with over 25 years of experience, Melissa has helped thousands of people bring clarity, joy, and balance into their lives. Melissa teaches others how to connect with their own intuitive nature and how to work with frequency for spiritual growth. Melissa has appeared on numerous radio shows as both a guest and a host. She is the author of Believe and Receive, Animal Frequency, Your Psychic Self, and 365 Ways to Raise Your Frequency. Melissa's books have been translated into Romanian, Russian, Chinese, French, and Czech. She lives in South Florida with her family, dogs, and horses. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much, Linda. I really enjoy being here today, and I appreciate you having me on your show. Well, I love the work that you're doing in the world, love the message, and when I saw, especially when I saw two names of your books, they just jumped out at me, the Believe and Receive book and 365 Ways to Raise Your Frequency. I'm like, whoa, she's speaking my language. i got to get her over here. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, let's talk about, you know, for those who may not know a lot about vibration and frequency, give the listeners an overview of what you mean by it and, and what it actually means in their everyday life. Okay. Um, so our personal spiritual energy is what's within us and what vibrates at various speeds. Um, and that vibration can change depending on how we feel, the kind of situations we find ourselves in. And it's also based, um, it's a culmination of all of our life experiences, um, outside influences and our internal joy and our overall happiness. Now, if we're feeling down, it might be vibrating at a lower rate, but we can always raise our frequency by doing various exercises um, to raise it up and vibrate faster so that we can improve, you know, if you're feeling down in the dumps, you, you can make yourself feel happier by raising your frequency. So with me, with, with the way I think about it, um, I call I have something I call it the core four which is your emotional frequency, you know, which centers around you know, how you're feeling and your emotions, your mental frequency, which is around how you're thinking about things. Um, because if you're like tired or you're, you're like mentally exhausted, you can, that you're, you can make your frequency lower um, and not realize that you're doing it. Your physical frequency, which is related to, you know, if you're doing a lot of manual labor or, or not, um, and then your spiritual frequency, which is how you're connecting with your inner pure self. Um, so by frequency, that's that's how I look at it. I, I love it because it you can feel it like in your body. I know when I'm mm -hmm. I know when I'm disconnected from my high frequency, right? Me like too. I know Me too. you do. Once you start tuning in, you can tell. And what I I love about it for myself anyway, Melissa is. 
once you become aware um, of your vibration in that moment, you have the conscious choice to shift it or stay there, right? But the choice is yours. That's true. That's true. And it's entirely up to you. And if you choose to to shift it to the positive and to raise your frequency up, it is so empowering. And I, look, I just got tongue-tied. It can empower you and help you move forward on your own path. Um, because what it does is it connects you to your true spiritual essence, and it helps you to understand people better. Um, and it can really, when you're aware, it can really tell you when you're out of balance. It's how I stay tuned in, um, is feeling what I feel in my body. We all have days, and I want to say that to the When did you realize, or when did you start actually working with vibration and frequency in your, in your own path? Um, I've been doing it for years and years and years, but I haven't been writing about it. Uh, 365 Ways to Raise Your Frequency was released in uh, 2012. Um, so that's the first time I had actually written about it to put it out there to teach others about how they could raise their frequency. Um, but for myself personally, um, oh gosh, 25, 35 years. I mean, a long, long time. It's life changing, isn't it? I sat in my past 25 years ago and, and, you know, took the baby steps to figure out what all this meant. But once you take those baby steps and that's what I want our listeners to hear is just having the awareness, just become aware that we are vibration, we are energy, right? That we do have a right. personal frequency. That just helps us show up differently. It just, I mean, I think it's so it empowering. Really does. It really is, and it really does help us. And for the listeners, here's one good way that you can tell when what you're doing to raise your frequency is working. Okay, so everything has a molecular vibration to it. When you're raising your frequency, your your molecules and your energy is it's going to move faster so the vibration increases well when you get an increase in vibration you feel heat so like if you rub your hands together really hard you, you're going to eventually you're going to feel warming up um so when you're raising your frequency if you start to feel warm inside and you feel an increase you know in in the heat within you um, you might even start sweating. I know sometimes when it's a really big, you know, event that I experience, I'll break out in a sweat. Um, but that's that's a sign that you can say, okay, this is working, and I am raising my frequency right now because I feel that warmth. And with the warmth comes a sense of feeling comfort and to feel happiness with it. Now, on the other hand, which this also happens to people, and it happens to me too, you can also feel coldness. But it's a specific kind of coldness. It's what I call the chills of universal truth. And that's when you hear um, a, a truth that connects to your inner essence that you know that this is life-changing. And you'll just feel like a, a cold wave go through you. You might get goosebumps on your arms or the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. But you know in that moment... This is the chill telling me that's correct for me in my life on my path right now. And I've had that happen. I've had it happen both ways when I, I'm trying to raise my own frequency. Um, so just be aware that it can be, usually it's warm, but that universal truth can be a cold chill that runs straight through you. And you're like, wow. I can resonate to both because I get the warmth. But I get, when I have an intuitive hit, whether it's about a project or anything, because mm -hmm. I, I call them soul bumps, so I love your description. I just call them soul bumps, and I know that I'm on the right path. Whether it's, uh -huh. do I birth this project at this time? Do I, if I get those soul bumps, which is that, like you described, I know that's my internal guidance system saying, yes, don't doubt this. Exactly. And and you you'll know it at a soul level. It'll just resonate within you, and and if you feel that, then it's time to move forward with it. So, exactly, and that's that's my little signs. Now, in your book, um, 365 Ways to Raise Your Frequency, you give a whole year's worth of ways to help you do that. When we come back from our break, I want to invite you to share some of those ways because I love giving my listeners, you know, a concrete tips and strategies to help them transform their lives. Okay. 
And we'll be back in a moment with Melissa Alvarez. You can find Melissa at melissaa.com as well as animalfrequency.com. And we'll be back in a moment. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You are listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is award-winning author Melissa Alvarez. So, Melissa, uh, share some of the ways that you shared in your book, 365 Ways to Raise Your Frequency. Um, share some of the ways that you recommend our listeners can get started. Okay. Well, the first thing that I would like to say about that is intention. Um, The reasons for what you're doing and the way that you act and the way you treat people around you, that is the biggest and the most powerful way that you can control and elevate your frequency. So all these exercises should be done with a positive intention because intention carries a vibration within itself. So if, if you're going at um, a way to, to raise your frequency, but you have a negative intention behind it, it's not going to work the way you want it to. So always have a positive intention um, and a loving intention behind what you're doing. Um, okay, so one of the, the exercises that I like to do, well, I live in South Florida, so we're close to the beach. Now, for listeners who aren't close to a beach, you can go in your backyard um, and dig in the dirt. So <laughs> this is a fun one. Um, I like to go to the beach, and especially if I'm feeling upset about something or I've got issues that are bothering me and I haven't been able to work them out. And what I'll do is I'll dig down into the sand a little bit, and I'll place my palms in the center <clears throat> of the hole that I created. And then what you do is you imagine all the negativity that's stored up inside of you flowing out of you and in your palms and then out through your palms into the earth and then imagine it going all the way down to the center of the earth and it's being cleansed by the lava that's at the center of the earth and then you feel all the positivity that the earth has flowing back into you through the palms of your hands and then once you feel balanced in that and you feel your energy and your frequency rising then cover up the hole and and pat it down and say thank you to the earth for helping you raise your frequency. So that's that's one exercise that I like to do. That's beautiful. I could I, I was trying to just drop down into what you were saying and put myself in that spot, and you could feel how it would help you ground. It really does. It really does. And the important thing with that is to always say thank you because 
there's lots and lots of exercises that you can do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And especially when you're working with the earth and the earth's frequency to raise your own frequency, always take a moment to say, you know, thanks so much for helping me achieve what I was trying to do. Um, I think that's important to be thankful and to have gratitude for, you know, those that help you. Um, okay, so another thing that, that you can do is to write down one positive thing about yourself every day. Um, I find it's so easy to fall into the negative and, and say things like, oh, I look terrible today, or oh my gosh, what's wrong with me today, or to, to look at things from a negative point of view. When you always want to try to look at yourself and those around you and the situations you find yourself in from a positive point of view. Um, by writing down one positive thing about yourself every day, then you're looking, you're taking one moment in time to look for something good within yourself that you can share with others. Now, don't limit yourself to just one thing. You can write down a hundred things if you like, but just take the time to look at yourself as a spiritual being and to know that you're here for a purpose and to write down a positive thing about yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that so validates, like I do the I am statements, you know, and I'm actually teaching my granddaughter. I said teaching her at four, um, and she's going to be six. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, she's going to be six, and I have her go in the mirror and just, you know, say it. I want her to remember, and when she went through a little stage about six months ago, because just not even six months ago, starting kindergarten and being surrounded with the energies of others, and she's a sensitive she, uh, oh, I call, okay. Yeah, oh, yes, very sensitive. I caught her saying things like, I can't believe I did that. I'm so stupid. And I'm like, excuse me? Where did this come from? But you, if you're suddenly around other children. And so for every time she, we caught her saying anything negative, like I can't dance well, um, we would say, um, reframe, please. And she, she'll say, <laughs> she goes, oh, um, uh, but guess what she does? She, if she says, I'm not a good dancer, the other girls are better. I always say reframe, and she goes, "I am an amazing dancer, and I dance in my own way." That's so, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> well, so because awesome. we know, uh, you know, you and I know the world is coming at the children uh, fast and furious, and if they don't have the tools, tools that I never had, right? So exactly. I, I would dwell on the negative thoughts in my head as you were just sharing. I didn't have anyone say like you're saying to sharing with the listeners today, hey, there's another way. So I love that you, know, you said I, write at least one a day, but like you said, don't stop there. Yeah, exactly. Write as many as you want. And see, I'm, I'm kind of in the same shoes as you are because, you know, I never had anyone to help me either, right? to understand, you know, intuitive abilities, to understand how to look at things from a positive way. And I fought against all that, you know, especially the the psychic abilities, because there's so many negative connotations around it, and I didn't want to be associated with that until finally, you know, and I kept coming across roadblocks, um, and then finally I was able to say, you know what, this is never going to go away. I might as well just accept it and see what I can do with it. And once I did that, then everything seemed to flow. And for me, that was a major point in my life where I just, like, jump started my frequency because once I accepted that I'm supposed to help others and teach others so that they know how to recognize situations that I didn't know how to recognize, um, then everything seemed to change and, and my life started flowing much more smoothly. And I, and I think that's when I really found my true purpose in helping people understand their own spirituality and intuition. I, so I believe think it's that, great that you're doing that with your granddaughter. That's awesome. Yeah, my daughter's um, 33 now, and I didn't start living these principles. Well, I started 25 years ago when she was young, but I would say really getting into it probably when she was in her early 20s. So my daughter reinforces all of these teachings and law of attraction and all that w with my granddaughter, and she lives it. But I still wish that I had learned it way back 30 years ago when she was growing up. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, no, I'm... I really believe that our mindset and, as you call it, frequency is so important. And I want her to have that skill set. Yeah, and, and it's good that you're teaching her that because it will make the way she looks at life so much different than how you and I looked at it, you know, when we first started out. Because you're giving her such a good basis and a place to move forward from at an early age, which is, I think, amazing and 
and that just shows such unconditional love, and that's awesome. Oh, yeah, she's my, she's our girl, and we have a 17-year-old grandson Ooh. that I started sharing the principles with about 10 years ago, so he was about seven in Reiki principles and all that. So uh-huh. um, for you, how did you know, I'm just curious, how did you mm-hmm. know you had the intuitive gift? Like, when did you realize, I have that gift? When I was, okay, so when I was really young, I grew up on a farm. And so I wasn't allowed to, like, be around the big animals and stuff when I was little. So we had an old pig pen where, you know, it was, like, fenced off. But there was this little shed that the, the pigs used to live in. But we didn't have pigs anymore. So I would go in there and just sit in there and just think, uh, you know, it, it's like I was communing. I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but I was communing with nature. And it was at that point that I realized that I could co- connect with elemental spirits um but i didn't know that's what i was doing then you know what i mean exactly you didn't name it right i just knew that that's what was happening um so that would have been like my first experiences but then when i got into uh high school um i would just know things before people said them and i would just i would see things that would happen and then they would happen and it would freak me out (laughs) and so the only person that knew was my best friend and I just didn't say anything because every time I would say something, people looked at me like I was nuts. And, you know, no no one in high school wants to be thought of as nuts, so you just don't say anything. Exactly. Um, but then in my 20s, um, when I was in college, I found this metaphysical bookstore, and I would just hang out in there, and I started reading about different things, and I'm going, oh, my gosh, this this I, I get this. This makes sense to me. <laughs> so finally... Once I explored my abilities even more, you know, I finally said, you know, when I was probably, I don't know, early, late 20s to early 30s is when I really started using the abilities and trying to teach other people what I had learned because they didn't know either. You know, they were friends of mine and they didn't understand. and And I would say, well, this is what I just learned. Maybe it'll help you. And from there, it just grew and grew until eventually I started, you know, I I started doing readings, didn't charge for them, just put up a little website and said, if people are supposed to get a reading with me, they'll find me and, and never advertised it or anything. And I did that for, wow, almost 20 years just with that little free website. And, and it kept me busy until I finally got to the point. I'm like, you know, what? I, I have too many people. I have to start charging. And then I charged very little, you know, just because I didn't see, I thought I was supposed to do it all without charging. Well, I think um, all of us go through that. Um, who am I to have a spiritual gift and earn money from it? I went through it all. Exactly. But then someone told me, you have to put value to what you do, because if you don't put the value to it, no one else will either. And I'm like, you know, that kind of makes sense to me. Okay. So, you know, and then from that point, I started writing books, and then I got published with Llewellyn. And so now... I look at, you know, I'm able to teach people about their frequency, you know, about um, uh, the natural laws of the universe, about animals and and how to connect with animals through my books. And I can reach such a wider audience that way than the little website that I was doing. So that's how I got started. It sounds like you kept following the spiritual breadcrumbs and it led you to your purpose. Exactly. Exactly. So is that when when you were you know diving deep and um, learning about your own abilities? You have a book called Your Psychic Self that where you teach others how to recognize and develop their own sensitive nature. When we come back yes. from our break, um, I, I invite you to share some of the obstacles that stand in our way because I believe we all have the gift, right? I do too. Yeah, yeah we so do. we all have it. When we come from back from our break, I want to dive into that a little deeper. Okay. We'll be back in a moment with Melissa Alvarez of AnimalFrequency.com and MelissaA.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you being called to step into your truth and embrace your divinity? Are you ready to align your heart and soul, live an authentic life, and become a divine magnet for love and abundance? It's time to listen to your inner wisdom and clear the blocks holding you back from your best life. Leading intuitive prosperity coach, Akashic Records practitioner, and evidential medium, Jamie Hearn of LiveYourDivinity.com 
empowers and supports spiritual women like you to align your inner and outer worlds, embrace your soul's truth, and live your divinity. Through her intuitive gifts, grounded wisdom, and empowered coaching, Jamie guides women back into sacred alignment with their truth. Visit LiveYourDivinity.com to learn more about Jamie's empowering programs and to schedule an Akashic Record reading. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, you're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is Melissa Alvarez, and we are talking about frequency and vibration, intuition, and so much more. So right before the break, Melissa, I had brought up your book, Your Psychic Self, where you teach others how to recognize and develop their intuitive nature. And I've always believed, I've come to believe, that we're all intuitive. We just have muck that covers it up. And like like a free, like you were talking about earlier, the frequency, I always see mud and stuff, and our job is to clear all that off so it can shine and be clear all the way through. What are some of the obstacles that stand in our way to to understand our own abilities? Well, I think the biggest, and and really it's like the only thing that's really standing in your way is fear. Um, and it's fear in a variety of ways, though. So you know, fear can hold us back from really recognizing who we are at a spiritual level. And when it comes to intuition and, and psychic abilities, you know, it's the fear of, oh, my gosh, what are other people going to say about me if they know I have psychic abilities? You know, they, it, you worry about that. And then the other thing is like, oh, my gosh, what if I'm wrong? And I think that's a big part of it is, you know, you see things happen and you dream things, and then they happen, and how do you know that if you tell somebody something in a reading, what if it's wrong? It, that's, that's a big, big thing, um, and it's all fear-based. So what I try to tell people is to, to try to step outside of your fear. You know, Look at it as you're going to receive the information that you're supposed to give to that person, and you're a vessel. The information comes from the divine. It goes through you, and then you relay it to them. Um, no psychic, no intuitive is 100% accurate. Never, ever. If they tell you, you are, they are, then, you know, go to somebody else. Because if we were 100% accurate, we would be God. And we're not. So, um, so I think fear tends to hold people back. Now, I'll give you an example of a situation that I found myself in because I went through this whole phase of, I, I just that's why I always did them for free because what if I'm wrong, you know, and if I'm not charging, then, you know, I, I can't say, well, you know, I just did this for free. But so I, I, my guides talked to me a lot and I was in a retail store and I was standing in line to check out and there was a lady in front of me and I kept hearing, tell her Mary said she's okay. And I'm like, no, 
I'm not telling her anything. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't know her. I'm not just going to walk up to her and say, Mary's okay. And I just kept hearing it. No, you have to, you have to, you have to tell her Mary's okay. And I was just like, oh, finally I just said, okay. So I tapped the lady on her arm and I was like, look, I said, you're going to think I'm nuts. I said, I don't blame you at all. I said, but I'm intuitive. And I said, I have a message for you and I just have to relay it because whoever it is is giving me this message is not going to go away until I tell you this. So I'm just bear with me. And is it okay if I give you the message? Cause I always ask permission first. And she said that it was. So I relayed the message to her. The lady grabbed me in a bear hug and burst into tears. Her daughter had been killed in a car wreck and her daughter's name was Mary. And she just wanted a sign that Mary was okay. Oh, you're going to make so, me cry. Yeah, so I I ended up crying with the lady, and I was just so glad that I listened to what I was being told, and I went ahead and got over my fear, and I delivered the message, because if I hadn't done it, how long would that lady have waited to get a sign, you know, from her daughter that she was okay? So when you experience things that are that deep and that profound and that, I mean, that's, that's changed me because I was just like, okay, I, I have to, if I have a message, I have to deliver it because of situations like this. Um, and that's just one example of how you can make such a positive effect on somebody by stepping outside of your fear and relaying what you're getting from the spiritual realm. And I want to talk about that because a lot of, um, a lot of people in my circle, you know, I have a large uh, community and yes. they get scared that I don't want to be intuitive because it means I'm going to talk to the other side. But I believe there's two, there's, I don't want to say there's two types of intuitive, but there's two types, there's different types of channels. Like I'm very intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you see they find the fear that they don't want to talk to the other side, so they think that's the only way to be intuitive? Yes, and you know, there's, and, and I see what you're saying. Okay, so. There's intuition when you're a medium and you speak to others on the other side. There's also your intuition that is just the knowingness, the clairvoyance, the clairaudience, that you hear things, you, you see things, you know things that have nothing to do with spirit. So that's the two different varieties that I think you're speaking of. When it comes to being a medium, you can set rules. I set rules because the first time I ever had any experience with spirit, like as in ghost or an entity around me, I was sitting downstairs talking on the phone at my parents' house, and they had this little pantry, or they have this little pantry, and I would sit there and talk for hours to my best friend when I was in high school. Well, one day, I'm sitting there talking to her, and somebody just, you know, put their hand over my shoulder and squeezed. And I lost it and ran out of the room because it was like somebody was standing behind me, and there was a wall the shelves of things that my mom had canned on that shelf. No way could somebody have been standing behind me. Scared me to death. <laughs> and so I made a rule then, you are not allowed to touch me. If you have a, a message for me, I'll be happy to deliver it, but I don't want anybody touching me. And, you know, I would prefer if you only appear to me in my mind's eye instead of like a physical thing in front of me. I really you know, that, that freaked me out a little bit. So I love that so, you set, set rules. Uh, some good friends of mine, Colette Barron-Reed <laughs> and um, Maureen Hancock, they've explained that to me. They've set their own rules. And I yeah, know and that I think you have to. You do. And Maureen had told me that. She says, listen, people, when I go in the bathroom, that's my quiet time. You know? Cause she, <laughs> she, exactly. Yeah, she's, she's a hot ticket. And I experienced it once back uh, probably 20 years ago. It was a, because it was um, – it actually saved me and my family's life. We were coming oh, back wow. from a cross country trip, and I, my honey had been driving. You know that last route you're trying to get home. You're like, I'm just going to push the hours because you're on. Right. We had been on the road for a month. We I had my 15 year old daughter and my honey in the very back of the pickup truck because it had a bed back there, and then there was a back seat, so it was a double cab, and I had uh-huh. said I will drive at night so you could sleep a little. I sh- personally, I know now I should never have done that, Melissa, because I'm not a good night mm-hmm. driver. But we just wanted to get home. And right. I, I remember doing the, I'll just close one eye, you know, the the, the games that your mind plays <laughs> when you're exhausted. 
And what happened was it was about 2 in the morning. I think we were in Kentucky. And three-lane highway, Meridian, three-lane highway, the opposite uh-huh. way. All I remember is a one of the most powerful hands I've ever felt grab my shoulder, my right shoulder, and tell me to wake up. I jumped because it hurt when he grabbed my shoulder. I mm-hmm. spun the wheel, and I was already going towards oncoming traffic. And wow. I spun the wheel. We thought we were going to, I was going to flip the truck. Now, of course, they opened the little sliding window that is in the back like, I won't tell you what they said because I can't yeah. remember. So, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yes, and he's like, pull over the truck. And they were both shaken because I whammed them right against the side of the truck. Right. And oh, wow. I was shaking, and after everyone come down, we start driving again. I kept looking at my shoulder because I felt the fingerprint still there. Wow. So I said to my honey, because there was no other logical way I could process this, I said, thank God you grabbed my shoulder to wake me up. He goes, what are you talking about? We were sound asleep in the back, and I couldn't reach you from two cabs back. And I said, but, 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 but. So I just sat quietly because they were still upset for the last 500 miles of the trip. (laughs) (laughs) Melissa, we get home. We hit the answer machine as we are, you know, unloading our, our stuff. And my honey's best friend passed away 24 hours before. We got home. Oh, my God. Guess what he did for a living? He was a blacksmith. He used to love putting his hand over my face because it was so big. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the power I felt. I knew without a doubt that it was him who saved our lives that night. Wow. Yeah, I still still get emotion. And and Dana hit his knees. He knew that that is exactly who it was. Um, He was watching out for you guys. Yeah, he, he died unexpectedly. So... I know that feeling of receiving on the other side, but I also know that feeling of saying, hey, Jeff, great to see you, but don't ever touch me again because you scared the shit out of me. Right, it. right. But see, that's a, that's a different kind of situation than what I was talking about. See, that was protecting you from being injured or yes. killed yourself in a bad car wreck. If it's something like that, I don't care. Go ahead, touch me. But if you're just here to say, tell so-and-so such and such, you know, I would prefer that you don't touch me because, you know, I just, it, it shocks me you know a lot of times you know the only ones that i don't that it does little kids spirits they don't get it and i've had them tug my shirts and stuff um and that doesn't bother me at all but just to out of the blue touch me you know i prefer that they don't but i'm so glad that he touched you and woke you up and and kept you from being in you know probably a, a terrible terrible accident Yeah, and what it did also, too, is I had already been deep into the spiritual path and my own intuition. It made Mm -hmm. me realize how connected and open I was and still am. So I dove Mm -hmm. even deeper into it, into owning my intuition. And I see and hear and receive, not from the other side, but my own intuitive abilities. And so it was such a gift on many, many levels. That's awesome. It's amazing. That's an amazing thing that you experienced with him it was such a gift and um i'm so glad that we talked about this because so many people have questions of, does intuition mean if i open my intuition does it mean i have to be a medium i believe in the answer is no it does not mean you have to be a medium no uh, it, you will experience what you're supposed to do i mean you know you can open up to your to your intuition just for yourself just so you you understand and, and feel more from you know, the, you, you, everybody talks about your gut instinct. It's the same kind of thing. You know, it's listening to your gut. It's listening to your heart. It's it's listening to impressions that you get, you know, because you've got guides and people that are helping you on the other side, and they just want to see you succeed. Exactly, exactly. And we're going to go to our final break, and we'll come back. Um, I want to talk about your other book because I just love the title, I always call, say, ask, believe, receive, and your book is called Believe and Receive, and I want to talk more about how we can use the natural laws to bring more of what we desire into our lives. Okay. And we'll be back in a moment with Melissa Alvarez of MelissaA.com. You can also find her at AnimalFrequency.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Isn't it time for you to listen to your own internal compass, your intuition, rather than listening to all those around you? When you learn how to navigate using your intuition, you'll discover how to hear your soul's whispers so you live a life of purpose, joy, and abundance. Soulwise Living Mentor, Laura Clark, provides women with the empowering tools and support to help them tame their inner critic, calm their emotions, and ground themselves so they can hear, trust, and act upon their inner guidance. If you're ready to awaken your intuition, visit soulwiseliving.com to schedule a complimentary sacred soul chat, read Laura's inspiring blog posts, and discover an array of free supportive resources. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Me, a cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to the Inspired Conversations radio show. I'm your host, Linda Joy. Today I am with Melissa Alvarez, and we're talking about intuition, frequency, vibration, and she has been sharing some strategies to help you tap in and ground. So, Melissa, in Believe and Receive, you share some of the natural laws. Um, talk about those natural laws. Okay, so um, there's 40 natural laws that I chose out of, you know, there, there's hundreds of natural laws. And, and I tried to pick 40 that I thought um, would be the most beneficial to readers um, and would be ones that they could really connect with in their daily lives. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a wide variety, you know, of, of laws. I mean, we can get into specific ones in a, a minute. Um, but one thing I wanted to, to say is that the natural laws are available to us all the time. Um, and you may use, you know, one law in a day. You may use, you know, two, three, four different ones during the day um, as situations arise. Um, but they're always there. They're always available. They're, they're available to everyone. There's no limit on um, how many people can use it or, you know, anybody can access them. Um, and we can use them when we need them or we can call on them, you know, when we're in a specific situation that, that maybe the law of gratitude, you may need to use that. And, you know, it, they're just there so that we can um, move forward with them. Um, they relate to our frequency because when we know what our frequency is, we have a clearer sense of where we need to go in life. And the natural laws can help us get there. And, and that is actually being clear on your path is the law of clarity. So when you're clear on where you're going, um, you don't get bogged down by all the little things that can, like, come from you at every side or people who might try to discourage you from moving forth. You just have to be clear within yourself of what you want to try to achieve. I love it. And how did you, it was just years of working intuitively and with the energies that you, I don't want to say discovered, but allowed them to unfold all of these, um, these laws. Yes. I mean, I've been using them for years. Um, and you know, I just thought, you know, you know, when you're a writer, you think, well, what's the next thing I could write about that'll help people. And I just thought, you know, what, the other reason, too, is because everybody always goes first and foremost to the law of attraction and manifesting things in their life. Well, there's so many more laws. I mean, the law of attraction is a law, and it is in my book. 
Um, but there's so many more that you could choose from and, and that people may not be aware of. Because, you know, you can be thankful for things, but you may not realize that there's a law of gratitude. Or you may be um, in a group. So, so let me use you as an example. <laughs> so, the, the law of unity um, means that when, you know, we're all spiritual beings and we all live within our own frequency and we're all part of the universal whole. And we see the divine light in each other and then we shine our own light for others, which enables us all to work together to often achieve common goals. And that's exactly what you do with your, your circle of people that you help. You know, you bring together like-minded women and you promote them and, and help them to get out there and see their light shining in the world so that they can help others with their own unique message. And I think that's so important with, you know, what you do is so important and you really utilize the law of unity in what you're doing. That's beautiful. Thank you for seeing that. It's my life's passion. And when I was reading the book, which I have in front of me, I saw the, the Law of Gratitude. That was an, one of my favorites. But there was a couple others that jumped out at me. Let me get, grab that. Hold on. Okay. One was Law of Intention. But there were so many. And I'm like, once I, I saw the title, I'm like, that makes sense to me. Like Law of um, Sacrifice, Law of Responsibility. Once I saw them named by you, I was like, that makes so much sense. It was like you brought it into my awareness. Okay, good, good. Thank you. I'm glad that it connected with you that way. Oh, it connected deeply with me, and and I have this book on, on my bedstand now. Beautiful cover, by the way. I know. Isn't it awesome? I, they did two or three or four different covers uh, at Llewellyn for it. And then when they said, they said, this is it, this is the final cover. And I was just like, that's amazing. And it's perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was even so the law really of abundance. Um, you have this quote at the beginning, which I, I love, and I have tabbed. It says, today I connect to the abundant source of all that is. I willingly remove all blocks and am open to receive all the happiness, love, and joy the uni of the universe with positivity. I am one with the abundance coming into my life. Like, there's such beautiful pieces of wisdom throughout the book that really resonated oh, with me. I, I, have little, I have little tabs throughout the book, you know, those little sticky things. <laughs> well, now, those quotes, you know, now that you mentioned the quotes, those quotes at the beginning of each chapter, is, are they're quotes that I came up with that, to try to get to, like, the core essence of the law briefly. Um, and some are longer than the others. And I actually created a mini meditation deck of cards with those quotes so that if people wanted to carry them around with them during the day, they're small, they're easy to carry around, and you can, like, connect through the quote and through the, the colors that I put in the backgrounds because I tried to make the, the color of the cards and the, the images in the back to be connected to the frequency that I felt of the law, you know, the law is frequency in that. So... So I'm glad you like that quote. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a quote girl, so especially uplifting high vibration quotes because I believe we mm -hmm. all need reminders. And, I agree. And so, like, I have quote books all around me. I have another one, little one here next to me. And I just think sometimes when we surround ourselves with high vibration um, phrases, words, etc., it allows us to up our vibration even more. It does. I totally agree with that because you have to work at it, you know, and when you surround yourself like that with positivity and, you know, a, a lot of people like to take, you know, write little quotes or reminders and stick them on their mirror on those little post-it notes. And then when you look, you know, when you're brushing your teeth, you can read, okay, this is what I should do today. You know, this is an uplifting uh, saying for me to remember today. And I think that it's all very helpful. It is, and uh, there's a company out there I haven't purchased from them yet, ConsciousInc.com. Have you seen it? I haven't seen that yet, no. Oh, my God. Temporary. I'll check it out. <laughs> temporary <laughs> tattoos, but all high-vibration mini quotes. They're gorgeous. They last for seven no or ten way. days. I have I have a bunch in the cart to order, but I believe just in the affirmational um, power of that. So I got a couple for friends um, that I'm picking up, but... It's exactly what you said when we tap into that, that vibration, and it goes back to how we started this whole conversation of intention, right, and naming something mm -hmm. positive every day just so we can maintain our frequency. 
um, quotes, uh, books like your books that you publish and uh, write and publish. Those are the kinds of things that I've surrounded myself with 25 years. And a lot of people ask how I've changed my life from welfare mom to what I do now. And I'm like, baby steps, intention, and um, always heading towards something that elevates how I feel. Exactly. And that's, that's following your path with purpose. And I think we all have to have purpose behind our forward motion because if you don't, you know, you need clarity and you need purpose because if you don't have those things, then you can meander here and there and, you know, you don't, you can get off path. Um, but when you have those two things and, and move forward in that manner, then it really, I mean, look what you've created in the last 25 years. You know, I mean, this, I, I'm very impressed with the, the network of people that you've brought together that are like-minded um, and, and I really appreciate, you know, you asking me to be on the show and, and picking believe and receive to be in your aspire magazine's top 10 for December. That blew me away. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. It's one of the things I love to do. If I see someone out in the world, whether I, and you and I didn't have a personal relationship, we didn't know each other, right? No, I didn't know you. <laughs> Yeah, but when I I'm feel happy to my, know you now, though. yeah, and I'm so glad that we're connected. But what I do is, and it's just part of who I am and how I want to do business in the world. If I see someone out in the world, a woman making an impact and raising the vibe of, and spreading a message of love and positivity, it, like your book touched me. I, I before I even received it in the mail, I was like, I this is it, and I contacted you. I went and did all my homework first and said surprised you by putting it in the December top 10 and now yes, I had no clue <laughs> yeah and as you know I've invited you to submit an article for the February March issue um, yes and I have them almost finished <laughs> yay and so I love community I love connection I love collaboration but more than anything I love being being someone who brings out positive content to women around the world to remind them of their truth and the power of possibility. And I think you're doing a phenomenal job of it, too. Well, thank you, darling. Thank you. And right back at you. You're very welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and I want to invite everyone, please, um, visit Melissa's websites. Check out all of her books. You can do uh, visit both websites at melissaa.com and animalfrequency.com. Melissa, I want to thank you for being here today, for sharing your wisdom, and for doing the work that you're doing in the world. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on the show, and thank you for all the work that you're doing as well. Thank you so much. And everyone, I want to invite you to tune in every Tuesday to the Inspired Conversations radio show. We're on every Tuesday at 2 p.m. For more inspiration, be sure to claim your free subscription to Aspire Magazine. You can do that at subscribe to aspire.com. Until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living. 